Well, hey everyone, and welcome back. The topic of today's video is isostasy, which is a particularly important topic when we're talking about plate tectonics. Now, just to begin, I'd like to give a simple analogy. This video is going to be a very simple introduction to isostasy. We're not going to talk too much about details, um, but I'd like to begin with an analogy, that being said. And what I've done here is I've prepared this water balloon, right? It's not actually a water balloon. It's a it's a balloon that's meant to be filled with air, that's been uh, filled with water by yours truly. But um, let's look at a few properties of this water balloon, right? If I were to hold it flat in the surface of my palm, right, so I'm just holding it flat out like this. Now what would happen if I were to apply a force onto it? Now anyone who's familiar with balloons and anyone who's familiar with basic physics should understand that if I apply a force onto it, one, it's going to apply a force to me, but also it's going to react to that force by compressing, right? You can see that directly beneath my finger, there's this little area in which the balloon indents, right? It gets pushed in. And that's because, well, there's a force being placed onto it, which in turn uh, creates more pressure. And as we know, if you increase the pressure, you simultaneously decrease the volume. So you're going to have, you know, with this indent, a lower total volume within the balloon itself. Easy enough, right? So that's a pretty simple analogy, but where was I going with that? Well, I'd like to start by just drawing out this little diagram and we can look at what was going on in here. I've got this circle here. This is the, this represents the balloon. Now, there are really two components to this balloon. We had the fin, obviously this has been uh, exaggerated to show the effect, but we had this thin plastic outer layer. Uh, the important piece here is it's solid, right? And then we had the inner piece, the water. And then of course, we'll draw a little force arrow there. We applied a force downwards on the top. Okay, easy enough. Well, what happened when we applied that force? We saw that the plastic moved down and simultaneously the water became, uh, became, you know, denser. There, it, it, there was more pressure applied to it. And we can think about this in an interesting way. Think about if we replace the water with solid plastic, if it were just a ball of plastic. Now, when I hold this water balloon in my hand and I apply pressure to it, it doesn't take a lot of effort, right? As we know, plastic isn't the most dense solid, but if this entire thing were solid, I would not be able to make dents or push it inwards that easily um, just because, you know, it would overall be much denser, uh, the balloon as a whole. So therefore, we can say that the water is actually vital to the effect that we have observed um, in this example. Now, where exactly am I going with this? This seems pointless, right? Well, we can actually apply this same idea to our Earth. And this is where isostasy comes into play. So we can draw our Earth in a very similar way uh, we drew the water balloon, right? There's the Earth. It's a, it's a poorly drawn circle with a very thin crust, of course, uh, very similar to the very thin layer of plastic we had in our water balloon. And then, you know, in here we've got the core, outer and inner core. But then the big thing here, directly beneath the crust, and this is sort of what's like the water in this case, we have the mantle, right? And the mantle, although it's solid, it's not liquid like the uh, water is. It's, it's, it's a very viscous, flowy solid. So it has some of the properties of water. You know, it has some more liquid-like properties um, that are very much a stark contrast to um, something as rigid as the crust or I should say the lithosphere, really. Um, the Earth goes from being solid to more plasticky um, at the boundary between the lithosphere and the asthenosphere. But to sort of complete this, uh, this example here, we need to have a force um, that could be applied to the Earth. Now, obviously, there, there isn't some giant hand coming down and pushing down on the Earth's surface, but we can think of things that we actually do have in this world. What if we have a, a giant mass of ice, a glacier, right? 
let's say we just have something like that sitting on the surface. We'll represent that with that box. Obviously, glaciers aren't that big compared to the Earth. You know, this is, isn't drawn to scale. So then this has a gravitational force downward on the Earth, right? Because the Earth has a, a gravitational field. So then what would happen? Well, just like with our water balloon example, we see that the crust, or the lithosphere more precisely, actually dips downwards in response to this force. We're going to see that it makes a slight bulge inwards towards the Earth's center. And this happens all over the place, and this is what isostasy is. This is known as an isostatic adjustment because the Earth is responding to the pressure that's been applied to it. And it's able to do this because it's not just one giant massive, you know, one solid ball. It's because there's a liquid layer down, excuse me, not liquid, there's a flowing layer down here that can actually respond to the stress that's applied without breaking, right? It's actually going to just compress a little bit, but other than that, it's going to be fine. And when this is removed, that liquid is going to say, hey, there's less pressure. It can expand upwards and it'll push the crust back up. And that's the key principle of isostasy. It's that when you have a large mass on the Earth, it could be anything. It could be um, a glacial mass. As I said, it could be something like mountains. It can be a variety of things. Anything that has a large amount of mass that's sitting on the Earth's crust is going to cause the lithosphere to move downwards and the asthenosphere to, to compress, right? And that's really the key point I wanted to nail in this video. Isostasy is just the adjustment of Earth in response, the adjustment of the Earth's crust in response to stress that is applied to it. We'll cover this in more detail in later videos, however. At that, I think I'll say, hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully it was informative, otherwise good review. Hope you're all having a fantastic day, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao. Together they are a relatively thin, not as thin as the crust, uh, solid layer. Another interesting fact about it is this is where we have all of our tectonic plates. Um, the, the tectonic plates aren't actually just situated on the crust, but they are on the